a couple of months ago, I uploaded a video of us converting a Harbor Freight dust collector into a dime by four by my buddy's shop. You know, the thing works fantastic here in my shop. I've been using it for about a year and a half. When I first built mine, I started to film it, but then I stopped because I didn't know if the effort was going to be worth the results and, you know, if it was even going to work. But now that I did it, I found out that, yes, this thing absolutely works fantastic. Well, mine, when I first did it, again, I didn't know if it was going to work, so I used about $10 worth of parts of things laying around my shop, and it has worked for the last year and a half. But since there has been such an overwhelming response to that video, I am going to go ahead. I went on Amazon and purchased a little higher end uh, switches and stuff, still very economical. So we've got our electrical outlet. So we've got a cord here that's going to plug in. And we need this outlet to become charged when we want the system to work and not charge when we want the system not to work. We're going to accomplish that by using this relay. So with this relay here, we've got DC on the bottom, AC on the top. So now we need DC to get this to switch. So I've got an AC to DC converter, and that's going to give us the DC power, power, power. So then we're going to have these little switches right here. And these switches are going to be on each of our blast gates. And whenever the blast gate is opened, it's going to just push that. And what it will happen is this, this is your common on the end. And the center one here is normally opened. So that means that, like right now, it's open. So these two are not making connection. And when that's pushed, it's going to make connection. <laughs> so... What we're going to end up doing is we're going to take from our outlet here, we're going to take our neutral, our ground, and we're going to come over here to the silver plug on our outlet. So now we also need AC power and a neutral on here. So we're going to split this wire and we're going to come over here to the AC neutral, which is on the left right there. All right, so now we are going to take our positive coming off of our outlet here, and it's going to come down, and we're going to come into lead one on our relay. And then we're going to go across here also and go to our ACN on our little AC-DC converter. So now this is going to put out 12 volts DC current. So we're going to take the ground and we're going to come straight off the ground and go into the DC ground over here. Now when this is energized we will then have AC power coming out of this terminal which we will bring over and come into the other side of our outlet. So when this is charged, that becomes charged. So in order to charge this, we need to have our DC positive go to this terminal here. But what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our common, and we're going to take, connect all of those together and then we're going to come down and connect to the DC output here. So now this wire is going to have our DC power going to it. Um, I'm also going to place a switch right inside the box. And we'll tie off of that and come right here. So now that we have our power coming all the way around, we're going to come back and we're going to go to the center wire here. And then this center wire here, all these will come out and be connected together. And so we'll come down and then we'll also connect here. And then that's going to come down and go into our switch. So now we've got our positive going to all of these switches 
And as soon as any one of them is activated, we will then have this be activated, which will turn on the power to our dust collector. I'm going to also place in my box just a little LED indicator light, and this is DC. So we'll run our DC positive and our DC negative so that anytime this is on, you know, it has a little indicator light on it, but this is going to be in a box, so I won't be able to see it. So I'll have this knowing that the switch is activated. And then you don't have to have it, but this particular switch has a light in it. And if you want that light to also come on, you have to have a DC ground. So we'll run that DC ground to the ground right there. And that is our electronics. So let's go ahead and put these all together in a nice box. You could also right here where it comes in and out of the box. This is just a regular 3.5 millimeter, you know, connector. And I'm going to place that right there so that all this will be in the box. And then this is going to be wired outside the box. And then you can just plug them in and out. Okay, so we've got everything kind of laid out. This is the indicator on the back right here and then the switch because we've already got them mounted into the faceplate. Uh, so they're kind of out of uh, direction here. So we got our relay here. So this is the hot coming off of our relay. So that's going to go into our outlet over here. And we're going to connect that underneath our gold terminal there. So we got that one um, going in. So that was our hot. So that is the end of the line on that one. So let's see, we've got our neutral. Our neutral needs to come over here. And this is going to be ACN on the uh, little board right here. And then here is, there we got our hot wire coming in. So the hot wire is black coming out of the wall. So I made it black on our AC and we're going to connect that. So now we've got our little DC converter all connected up here to the AC power side. So let's go ahead and connect this side here. So our V positive is going to be the V positive here that's going to go around. So I'm using the red on the plug here as the V positive. So I am going to connect this little red wire here. All right, so now I need the ground coming off of here. I don't think I made that one, did I? Oh, wait a second. That one goes to the indicator. Yep, I got it right here. So my indicator, which is going to be V ground, I've got to come up here to the switch. So this is going to be the ground. So this is the ground terminal there. And now This is our V ground into here. So that is all four wires connected to this. And now this is our DC ground. We need our V positive, which is going to be the wire coming back. And so this one here is the V positive coming back from the switch. So it needs to go into the switch on the uh, load terminal. And that's going to go into the positive side of our switch. So now we just have to finish connecting our relay here. So I've got my out going to the outlet. 
and what we have, uh, we have our neutral, which is our white wire that we need to connect in here. So we're going to connect this. Let's turn this up here where you can kind of see. Sorry, I'm trying to get this done. I did try to put some extra wire in here, more than what I may would have normally, but um, so that I can kind of show this on screen here. So now we've got our neutral coming in. Since we're up here, we'll go ahead and we'll connect this uh, actual ground here. Okay. So we've got the ground connected. Now our black wire coming in is our hot. So that is going to go under our screw number one here on the relay. So now we need our switch wire. So this is our wire coming in that's going to be energized from our switch. So whenever this one becomes energized, it's going to turn our switch here on. I do believe that's it. So now I just got to shove all this in the box and screw the box together. Okay, so here is everything placed into the box. The um, solid state relay here, the one I'm going to put a link, came with this uh, heat sink. Now, I ran for a year and a half with a solid state relay just like this one that did not have a heat sink on it. I haven't tested to see exactly how many amps the uh, motor pulls, but it is recommended to put a heat sink over 10 amps and so I went ahead and I just thinned out the wall here and that way the heat doesn't get trapped in the box so the heat off of this little relay is going to be dissipated through here and this will be outside of the box so that that will keep the uh, everything nice and cool in there and so so here is my dust collector as you can see all we have to do is hit the switch and it comes on. Uh, this, we just now have to go to the base. As you see, as soon as these two wires touch, it comes on, which is what the switch on the blast gates are going to do. Okay, so, I need to mount my switch right there so that whenever the door is closed, this will be pressed. All right. So, since these are 3D printed, what I did is I'm going to take <coughs> that bolt right there out, and then I'm going to add in this little T-nut. So that will give me a metal attachment point. I have hot glued, and I have CA glued, the little micro switches on before. They held up for months at a time, but eventually they have came loose on my most used doors. And then we're going to drill that real quick. Now that I have a hole drilled, I'm actually going to tap some threads into that hole. This is a 632, and then I'm using obviously 632 bolts. Okay, so now this one is going to go into the plastic. So what I've done here is I've grabbed a number four screw. I screw that in with the little number four. Then I take it back out, and that was a sharp point. And then I come back in with the uh, number six. Screw that in. And... Now we're good and solid. We don't have to worry about that coming loose no more. 
So all we have to do, remember we're going to put our common here, and then we're going to put our switched wire coming out here. It really doesn't matter as long as every one of them you do exactly the same, and that way all of the hots are on one terminal and all the switched is on the other terminal. Now I have two basic ways that I like to attach my pipe to the wall. One is I just take a piece of three quarter inch plywood, drill me a four and a quarter inch hole, stick my pipe in there, and then put uh, two pocket screws and just screw that straight to my wall because my wall's back here of plywood. I like to have a little space between my pipe. That gives me a little room for the uh, doors to actuate. So what I like to do is take a piece of three quarter inch plywood and I find it's about 12 and a half inches here. Since I'm mounting this right under my French cleat, it's about an inch and a half. So you know, I make that 13, 12 and a half by 14. And then I come right in here. And that brings that down nice and solid. What I do though is I make sure to get past the lip so that the pipe will go in. And then if you screw these in and you get it in here good and solid, that's about one of the most secure ways I have found to uh, secure that pipe. Now I'm using like a big truss head. Just a, a regular Phillips sharp point trust head screw. Uh, I've done it with regular construction screws. It works the same either way. But I think the bigger head may give it just a little bit more gripping power. So now that's on there good and tight, and we can go mount it. All I gotta do is make sure that this slides on all the way. screw it into the wall. Okay, so working back from our box assembly, I've checked this here is just about perfect amount of wire to get to the plug on the switch. Then I'm going to run the end of my spool down here. And then we're going to twist the black together and we'll twist the red together. And you just want to make sure that you keep the same color so that if as long as you don't mess up and cross the wires, even if you mess up, I like to keep everything on the same terminal. So I'm going to have since this is a red and black, the red wire to me is the common because that's the one that has the um, power flowing through it. And then the switch is going to be um, my black wire. However, if you mess up and put the wrong one on the wrong terminal, as long as you're going to the common and the normally open terminal, it's still going to work because with that switch, it just opens and closes. So now that I have the wires plugged in, I just got this white duct tape. And I uh, use this white duct tape to take the wires to the back of the pipe. And now it completely disappears. And then we just run this to our next drop and do the same thing. Now that we have all of our drops hooked up, I got this one over here from my miter saw. Luckily, i am got a crawl space. So what I've done with this one is that goes through my floor. And then it goes underneath and comes back up underneath my table saw. And that way I don't have to worry about my table saw. Um, tripping over it, I don't have to go overhead. 
Now when you hook up one of these central back system dust collectors, it should be against the law not to put in a floor sweep because you are still going to get a little bit of dust, you know, like right here on the table saw. I even got the little cloth thing, but I still, you can see the dust down there on the bottom. But, you know, you're going to get a little bit of dust out, but with the floor sweep there, you can just sweep it up and within just a couple of seconds, you're done. I got my little switch box right there and hooked up. And as you see, I'm lucky enough that I can just vent my exhaust straight outside. I get very little. It's just the finest of the fine or whenever I'm using like the floor sweep and I'm pushing the whole pile at once. Does anything come through? And now this is the outside. Uh, is this a six inch dryer vent? And I mean, if you look up in there, you can see there's a little bit of that little powdery, but it's really not very much considering that that's been a year and a half. So basically, the system is up, you know, completely rebuilt and is working perfectly for me now. It worked a year and a half like it was before. This would work for until I no longer be out here doing the working projects. I'm sure in the future I'm going to add in possibly a downdraft to my workbench. Uh, i got a sander and a few more drops here and there, but with everything just being stuck together, you know, it's very easy to pop it apart, cut it, put it in a T, and add another drop somewhere. So if you have any questions, let me know. I know a lot of you guys up north, you know, we're talking about the event outside. I guess it's very expensive to heat a shop or difficult. Um, I probably should uh, see about maybe doing a filter system and it'll help cut down on my AC. But here it is, almost uh, November, and it's going to be almost 90 degrees out. So I've got both air conditioning and it's running full blast. So uh, fortunately, I don't have to worry about, you know, recycling the heat. So I just exhaust out to the outside. But, you know, that might be a future video. Uh, I want to do some testing to make sure that if I put a filter on the system, that it's not going to hurt my suction because I want to make sure that I get the sawdust out. So we'll check on that. And if you have any other questions, you know, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer them.